thankfully now we have a variety of different selective direct inhibitors of KRAS G12C. So as a reminder, it's a specific mutation that you're looking for. One of these drugs is AMG510, which right now has a name, Sotoracib, and it is in clinical trials for patients that have these G12C mutations lung cancer patients, and also other cancers that might harbor G12C, such as colorectal cancers. Thankfully, we've seen very good activity in KRAS G12C mutant lung cancers, and we're seeing response rates that approach 50%. Um, that's a dramatic difference from the older strategies that target KRAS. And so this drug has been very exciting for the field in general. The design of these drugs is um, unique and uh, has been made possible because of the particular configuration of the KRAS G12C mutant protein that's unique relative to other proteins such as G12D or G12V. Uh, in, a partic in particular, there is a thiol group on the cysteine of KRAS G12C that can be targeted with these covalent uh, inhibitors. Um, and in general, one thing we haven't mentioned is that these direct inhibitors target the protein and lock it in the inactive state, noting that the drug, the uh, KRAS mutant protein, shuttles between these active and inactive states in order for it to trigger continuous downstream signaling. Obviously, uh, in a early phase one, two study, the goal is to determine uh, the dose, the safety, uh, and uh, early signs of efficacy. Those early signs of efficacy are generally uh, first uh, objective response rate, um, and then later uh, duration of response, progression through survival, and, and overall survival. Most molecular therapies uh, have objective response rates as single agents of 50% or more, uh, and median progression-free survivals of nine, 10 months or, or even more. The FDA uh, has determined from other molecular drivers that chemotherapy and other standard treatments in the past have had response rates lower than 50%, and uh, median progression-free survivals in the four or five month range. And so they have give accelerated approval uh, to agents that have response rates over 50% uh, and median progression-free survivals of nine months or more. So, so far, uh, these two agents do seem to have response rates that are appearing to be in the 50% or potentially higher range. Uh, the median progression-free survival is too early to determine, uh, but certainly could be in the nine month or more range. The safety profiles have been uh, really good uh, for these agents uh, so far. They're, rates of grade three and four um, serious adverse events is quite low. And um, so far, uh, these agents seem to be as safe or potentially even safer than some of the other molecular therapies that we have. And that's because normal cells don't, uh, don't have KRAS uh, G12C mutations. And so uh, these therapies are highly, seem to be highly specific and therefore not causing uh, serious uh, side effects. The grade two anemias and so on that have been reported, it's not even clear whether those are due to the disease or uh, due to the treatment uh, at this point. The Code Break 100 study is a phase one, two trial of the selective KRAS D12C inhibitor AMG 510 or sotoracib for patients with KRAS mutant lung cancers and other cancers. In particular, we're looking for that G12C mutation. The goals of the study were to 
show the safety and activity of this molecule in this molecularly enriched population. And we certainly saw that the drug was not only active, um, but also safe. And I think that's uh, critical to know because KRAS T12C doesn't exist in uh, the normal um, human body. And so there's not a KRAS T12C molecule that uh, is harbored by normal tissues. And so conceptually, you in the design of these drugs would have a good therapeutic window um, where you're able to hit the target hard uh, but not actually hit normal tissues to a substantial extent that you see a high frequency of drug-related toxicities. In terms of the development of AMG uh, 510 and KRESH G12C inhibition, I, I do think it has the potential to be practice changing. In non-small cell lung cancer, overall response rates are about half, about 50%. Uh, I think we need to know more about the duration of response and progression-free survival uh, among a larger group of patients to really see, does it stack up to like Osamaritinib and EGFR mutant lung cancer, Aleptinib and ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer. So we ne really need that data to mature and get the result of larger trials. But I'm hopeful it will be practice changing, albeit it seems too early to say. And I would note there appears to be some differential uh, activity based on histology. For example, activity in non-small cell lung cancer seems to be better than, for example, colorectal cancer where response rates are lower. And that's where I think we need to look at the effects of histology and other co-mutations and how they may impact uh, the activity of KRAS G12C inhibitors. In terms of the practical implications of AMG 510 as you know, you, uh, direct KRAS inhibitor, I, you know, I do think um, it, it has the potential to be practice changing, I think, um, but I think it's too early uh, to say uh, without further data, without the progression-free survival, duration of response, and having more data with that among a larger group of patients uh, to say how practice changing it will be and what those practical implications are. For these agents, uh, toxicity has, has been really pretty minimal. These have been well tolerated. There have been a couple of cases of uh, diarrhea and anemia. And these have been uh, well controlled and have not been dose limiting. Um, in fact, the anemia, it's not totally clear whether it's due to the drug or the disease. But uh, the diarrhea and the anemia have been quite infrequent and easily managed and have not required um, discontinuation of the drug. 